So this is one of our first revisits today, or this season. This was a originally a build around submission for uh, the lore hold dragon here in general. And I decided to go in the direction of playing it with oh, kind of a reanimator control shell. So when this attacks, you can look at top seven cards in your library. You can cast an instant or sorcery with mana value less than or equal to its power from among them. This card is sweet with Crux of Fate, a card out of the Mystical Archives that says destroy all non-dragon creatures. So you can attack with this, floop into this, and kind of clear the board out other than our big, our big scary dragon. Um, notables, adventure cards. You can cast the instant part of these adventure cards with this. We are playing, we are playing some less common um, dual land cards here because hitting a discard spell on occasion seems good with Lorehold. Hitting a removal spell on occasion seems good with Lorehold. We've got Glorybringer here. It's just like another good quality threat similar to the last deck we were playing that also doesn't die when we destroy all non-dragons with Crux of Fate. And then we've got Faithless Looting and Thrilling Discovery to kind of get this into the bin to cheat it out ahead of time with the Burial Rites as well as have our deck have some consistency in the cards that we're finding game to game. We've also got some thought seasons here as disruption, and then a smattering of different interactive pieces in the sideboard. Yeah, I have elected to cut cut the Sarkins today. So for the second playtime through, I wanted to try and just increase our average card quality here. Sarkin was cute, but it's more of a pet card than anything. So I've added more adventure creatures here as just like good quality cards, so. Let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and see if our first time playing this was a fluke or if if lightning can strike twice here with this one. When it when in doubt, add more Eldrain cards is a good is a good rule of thumb. How are the decks today? Uh, red, red, white, mid range was very good. We started with feather and it was real mediocre, Worky. I don't, I don't know that I'm gonna play that archetype anymore. This is where the magic happens, champ. I think I play this tapped on one here. I don't really want to hammer my life total a super, super ton. There aren't too many decks that punish me for waiting to thought season till turn two. <laughs> I don't really know that the green cards were holding us back other than making the mana awkward worky, if I'm being honest. Like I don't I don't see red white solving the problem of, of feather just like not having particularly good interaction and not being particularly linear. I think, I think the way this format has shifted away from creature decks is really bad for the Feather archetype in general. Really care about the baffling end, Bob. I think I'm. I think I'm like looting this giant into the bin to set up, try and set up, uh, try and set up dragon straight on the line. Okay, I think I'm just holding the holding the bone crusher giant here, and then like we're casting faithless looting next turn probably. Once we draw another card, like why do I why do I care about their removal, Chat? Super unfortunate. It's pretty punishing for. Uh, Honestly, I'm just going to top right here. They've got Tefri coming down next turn, and my Faithful Slootings are turned off now. Uh, 
want the rip apart. Yeah, it could have been right, Bob. The way the way the game played out, your line definitely looks a lot better. Honestly, I think I might just trim one of each of these because they're pretty bad against our set and be able to uh, just like play a, a slightly longer, more fair game plan here. Rip apart does kill Narset, you are correct. Card super flexible. Mana base has not been kind to us so far. Sarkin's like fine in this matchup. I don't even know that it's really good though. Cause like you're you're right that like if there's one matchup that Sarkin's good in, it's this one. He's basically shit everywhere else. So I don't think that's really a reason to play Sarkin. Like there's a lot of people that play control on the ladder, but like playing a card that's like only good against control doesn't seem particularly exciting. Yeah, the fact, the fact that they saw Faithless Looting means that they probably assume we're a graveyard deck because Faithless, Faithless Looting in general isn't good enough to be playing if your deck doesn't have some kind of graveyard synergies to pair with it, Mean Bean. The fact that Sarkin's ultimate is pretty bad in this matchup feels, feels not great. I think if you wanted a really narrow bad card for control, you could play Sarkin for the sideboard. But in general, I think you're better off playing cards like discard spells. Because discard spells are also good against combo. You want versus control is pack red. I don't even think that's true. Just the trick for this. Pack Red. Pack Red is historic legal. Just for reference. I shall miss your company. We want Pack Red when it's historic legal. Already is, isn't playable. I think Zark is much better than Pack Red to set a low bar. Chat, chat currently lifting, listing off all the narrow bad cards we could play against control. You are correct. There are lots of narrow bad cards you could play against control that are threats. I agree. I agree with your assessments. Again, the reason why you err on the side of things like discard spells here are because these are cards that are good here that also have applications in other places. this rider and they're going to play a Tefri. This is a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, settle, settle is nice to know about. Agreed. Why didn't they cycle that in response? Because they wanted me to take it. Oh, the opponent's also playing a combo deck. It's pretty sweet.
I mean, at least we're not drawing those lands. Yeah, I made I made a few changes. Uh, Hamlin, if you look on Gardenboard Live, you should see him there. And it added more adventure creatures. I'm trying out a couple of Palaka predations here instead of just all mauling, so we can have some dis more so we can have some more main deck discard spells to flip into with this. I mean, like, they could have waited to cycle the Shark Typhoon, but they probably still lose that game. Right, Tree is the answer. So you're right, they would have been in a better position, but also at the same time, it really didn't matter. Get you later, Bean. Mushmaru, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel this afternoon. Some duress here and then rip our set apart. wanted them to brick on a land there. Nice. Nice. Well, the Graph Digger's Cage makes this decision easy, then. When do you want Inquisition versus a discard spell, and why does Duress work better for this deck? So Duress is a sideboard card. You almost never want to sideboard Inquisition of Kozilek. Is the, is the TLDR. So, Duress is a better discard spell out of the sideboard. The matchups where you want discard spells. Inquisition is a better main deck card if you want more than four discard spells than just Thought Season your main deck. Hey, Lola Lunabur, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. So, I 
If we kill this, right? Hey, hello, Al. Thanks for the follow. Good afternoon. This is Wrath of God or this is Wrath of God. This could be a counterspell. Or like a shark typhoon or something that they're tanking on. Now the Wither Bloom Dragon's not a very good card. Oh, you know, I should probably hold my land because of Faithless Looting and uh, any, any other lands I draw here, I'm going to start holding. They start making castle tokens. Not yet. Opponent really loves the end step brainstorm. God bless him. Brainstorm is not opt, chat. Don't cast it like opt. I know my responsibility. Let me know if you're up Yeah, the only instance where you usually want to end step brainstorm is like if you need to hit a card the following turn and you can't afford to hit that card and cast and cast something else. off for holding our land. I'm gonna continue to hold this land for Faithless Looting. Opponent has not cast Wrath of God yet, right? They still have that in their hand. I want to play this out into Wrath of God yet. I could draw another discard spell for it. I think I take cast out, play dragon. I unfortunately can't cast whatever spell this finds because of Graft Digger's Cage. Cage, Cage getting us on two axes is said. Good night, Gandalf. I think Blade Wings, I had Blade Wing in the original draft, um, Gilded, and I think it just tends to be win more. Also, like, more cards that get turned off by Graveyard Hate isn't, isn't ideal. Hasty, hasty monster goes boom. Me, Nikki B, and Chester, thanks for the follows, good afternoon. There's any reason to really shock shock in and do this right away. Oh, 
when will the submission be approved if looked at? I look at submissions every evening. Now, Lightning Axe. Okay, so they're Blue Red Phoenix, or Teamer Phoenix, I imagine. Be, would be my guess. Do I bin the Unburial right so I can cast it a turn sooner? I don't think so because of the Lightning Axe. Holding, holding on to the Unbearer rights also makes my opponent not know that it's coming. And I can also flashback the thing next turn and like make the decision to bend the rights next turn if I want. Yeah, that, that style of deck is just super satisfying to play. I love, I love those kind of small creature mid-range decks. Are they a Phoenix deck with Arcanist? I guess they could be doing both. Arcanus is good with their can trips. We'll hope to spike a land next turn. Honestly, could see playing more, more Preditions and, uh, and whatever. These are, like, decent cards to hit with the dragon and they help us make our land drops. One untapped land, please. It. <laughs> Just looting, right? Our bird is biggest, you're not wrong. Getting getting another lore hold in the bin actually isn't terrible here because it means if they do like pillar plus something else to kill this, we have another one done burial right. No blocks here because they have pillar of flame in hand. Crux of Fate. Oh, that's a meeting. We did, we did when we did beat the Gandalf player. Our percentage points to hit something on average, super high. Seven, seven looks as a ton of looks. The adventures do count as hits. You can cast murders, you can cast stomp and anything else off of them, yes.
Oh, did I just miss lethal? There is a stomp in there. I'm aware I missed lethal. I wasn't looking at their health total. It's fine. This is this is the only justice here is just you and me, chat. It's just just us here, chat, okay? Don't worry about it. It's not about lethal, it's about sending a message, yeah. I don't know, they probably had draws that could punish me missing lethal there, so. Clarion's really great here against Sweeper decks. Getting to grab Clarion off of this to like deal through to their board and give this lifelink is huge. The flavor text on this gets to come up. Um, thought sees out matchup. So Justice in Minnesota. Justice, Justice would be Floyd still being alive and fixing a broken system. I'm glad, I'm glad something happened to, to the murderer from Minnesota, but. Justice, Justice would be reforming the system that caused that awful murder in the first place. Account accountability, that's the word I'm searching for. What are we trimming? This could be a Thought Seize Out matchup. Just like, play more cards that play to the board. Bonecrusher Giant seems only okay here. Maybe it's Giant out actually, and we leave some discard spells in. Yeah, lowering, lowering the density of spells in their hands is definitely real. I think the dragon could be a good control finisher. I think it's a better combo card than a control. Although you could you could definitely argue in a way that our our deck is more of a combo control deck than anything. We're definitely not like a dedicated combo deck. We cast our spells a good deal. It isn't real. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel today. Uh, the GOP and various state legislatures from everywhere from Florida to Georgia are implementing lots of really awful state level laws that make everything from accessing voting rights more difficult to being able to literally run down protesters in the street with your car without repercussions. It's, it's really, I know a lot of people in the U.S. get sick of hearing it, but like, your elections matter, and there's this big focus around the presidential election every single, every four years, but like, the elections that happen on the midterms are arguably more important to your lives. They have a, a much higher chance of directly impacting you, your state and local elections. Yeah, my, um, what's the source? I'm running down protesters. Just Google it. The, the actual verbiage in the law is if there are people in the street, I believe a group of three or more, and you quote, fear for your life, you are allowed to run them down with your motor vehicle. I believe, I believe is how the law was phrased. Good, good luck proving intent on someone that says, I feared for my life. Man, that's, that's really good against us. If you're a sub and would like to stay informed on politics, especially if you're left-leaning like myself and many others are here, the subs discord is a great place where we've talked about this one when it came up. We talk about it on stream occasionally when they come up naturally too, but if you're someone that wants to stay a little bit plugged in without doom scrolling social media, the subs discord is a great place to do that. 
Uh, you know, this card's gonna make our graveyard stuff real, real medium. I guess, I guess we're just getting rid of the graveyard stuff because of that. Yeah, whenever, whenever people who live outside the United States, I, I often have people who live outside the United States, especially in Europe and occasionally Canada, that are like, Jeff, you're too harsh on the conservatives in the United States. You need to be more, more forgiving and realistic. They can't be as bad as they really are. And like, just understand that like, they're passing laws like being able to run down protesters without repercussions. They're passing laws that make it illegal to give out food and water to people that are waiting in line to vote, that are being suppressed to vote because they have to literally wait four, five, six hours in line to cast a ballot because the GOP can't win elections if they're not suppressing voters. Like it's, it's what, however bad you think it is, it's worse. My, my, my six year old, when they were able to go to school before the global pandemic happened, that was mismanaged when we had the GOP in charge of the United States. My six year old, their, their elementary school has lockdown drills in the event that an active shooter walked into their elementary school. So trust me when I tell you that however bad you think it is, it's worse. You, if you live in a country where that that's not the norm, be thankful. I think we thought seize and then Clarion here to clear the board. Helms, thanks for the prime support. And if you follow us too, welcome to the channel. Like I said, we mostly focus on magic. I'm I'm very progressive. I vote Democrat, but I, I align closer with Bernie Sanders or AOC than Biden and Pelosi. But I understand reality. There's a lot of there's a lot of scary, scary things in the world. I just I have three small children. I would like to make the world a better place for them. If if possible. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She's a progressive, progressive congresswoman from New York. She streams on Twitch on occasion too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If they have a one-one here, we're probably dead. But if they don't have a one-one, we might be able to race them. Glothus. Glothus is hard to race though. What are what are cards our deck could play to answer Clothis? Are there anything? What what exiles this? Do I need to play something like Cast Out to deal with this card? Chaos Warp. K you know, Chaos Warp actually isn't a terrible suggestion. <laughs> we could just play Skyclave. I might have to mess the, I might have to tweak the mana a little bit, but Skyclave's a super good, a super good suggestion. Skyclave's super flexible. Thanks for the prime support, Bro Dirt. Appreciate that. All right, do we crux and kill this? They don't have that many 1-1s one in their deck, right? They're already through two of these. I'm gonna pull Haka and take a look at their hand. Skyclave, Skyclave and Chaos Warp are both reasonable suggestions. Oh yeah, Chaos Warp being a hit off of the dragon is uh is a good consideration. Cards, cards that uh, Lornhold Dragon can hit are are good. And Sky, Skyclave would be hard on the mana. So yeah, maybe maybe we play cards that we can hit off a dragon. I 
Thanks for the follow, Hacksaw. Alright, we're done here. Yeah, Revoke. Revoke Existence is a card. I like Chaos Warp that is flexible. Honestly, you might play a split. Like, two two to three answers to Jaclothus is probably a good number. Tango, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Uh, the deck that we're playing was originally a sub build around, but this is our second time playing it. I think it's very reasonable. No, nah, I don't think any of the archive cards have have animations. Forsake the worldly is probably a good one. Cycling, cycling is a great keyword. Means you could bring it in against something like blue white control too, and not feel bad about it. I think because we're on the play, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into play tapped. Their deck can be kind of aggressive, so I want to preserve my life total a little bit. Yeah, for people walking into this conversation halfway, we're explicitly looking for cards that answer Clothis. Naimi, thanks for the follow. I don't think I need to hold up Ryder here. I'm just going to get my land tipped into the play. Yeah, Parika's Libation is technically, technically a card. Yeah, I think, I think I feel like we're just dead to that. Like, the, the problem is, like, our deck can play through Clothus being Graveyard Hate because we can just, like, cast our spells. The problem is Clothus is basically just impossible to race because it deals damage to us while simultaneously, simultaneously gaining them life. And, it, and this isn't just this deck that plays this card. This card's very good in the format in general. Ch Chaos Warp is Stone Rain against Blue White Control a lot of the time, which is super funny. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna concede and we're gonna pack uh, answer that in my sideboard, but I'm gonna run to the restroom really quick before I do that. Don't go anywhere. We've got several more hours of historic coming up. Back up. I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Duck up on screen here. Come on, I wanted to put the deck up before I run. Damn it, Arena. Come on, Arena. Oh come on, you're screwing with me at this point, client.
All right, so I feel like you don't need black black till five. You could cut two black sources. Well, so the problem, Bob, is if you look at my mana, I'm only playing 20, 26 lands, counting these as lands. So I don't, I don't think I can afford to go down to 20. I don't think I can afford to go down to 20, 24 lands. Yeah. Yeah, these are, I'm counting, I'm counting these as lands in my mana base count. I've got six tap lands and 26 lands, basically. These are like lands that we can hit off of this. I don't, I don't think I need Chaos Warp in the main. Like, Cloth is a card that mostly comes out of sideboards. I think like one, one to two Chaos Warp seems fine. We could just play like a Revoke Existence, Forsake the Worldly Cycles. I like the cycle on Forsake the Worldly. The fact that it's uh the fact that it's an instant means that uh Alright, so it's theoretically four. I think we can go down at least one rip apart, especially with the addition of Bone Crusher Giant to the deck. I don't need as many two mana pieces of removal. Um, I think we can give up the third duress. Because I've got two Predations in the main deck, so that's like eight discard spells post board there. I think those are those are the easy cuts. And then, then from there they get more challenging. Like I think I need. Maybe I could maybe I could trim a Clarion. Clarion's like, these are like technically sweepers, like sweepers five through five through seven. So I have the four, the four crux of eight in the main. I think, I think I'm gonna go for the trim around the edges plan. I'm gonna like trim a Clarion and trim a Flame Scroll Celebrant. I could it could also be that like four of this effect is too many. I'm like, I only need, only need three of them. These cards are pretty flexible, so it's not like I'm putting in a super narrow card to answer Clothis, but... This is an eSports card if I ever saw one. Let's do two Forsaken and Chaos Warp. We have, we have a decent amount of card draw, so we can hopefully be able to find them. We can also, like, floop them into play off the seven mana dragon. If we're able to live to get that far, if their Clothis comes down not on and not immediately on turn three. Thanks for the 54 months of Prime Andrew, by the way. Almost, almost missed that one. The stream queue from top to bottom. Yeah, loosely, loosely speaking, some of some of the decks in there are at were added on the exact same day, so they have the same priority in there. But approximately top to bottom, new new things get added at the bottom. <laughs> the new sideboarding interface is so bad. the advantage of playing Chaos Warp and the White Exile cards do the exact same thing with no downside. They do the exact same thing against Clothis with no downside, but Chaos Warp is a flexible card. So, like, Chaos Warp can be used to deal with, like, uh, Planeswalkers, for example, in the blue-white matchup. Now, you could theoretically try and Stone Rain people with it, too. It's a very flexible card. Speaking of Gandalf, looks like just Guy Gandalf. Could be could be Blue Red Gandalf too, but Hey Bib. The 
power level historic is commiserate with the power level increase of your stream when small children are involved in saying silly things. Thanks for the 20 months and for the very generous tier 3. CEO, thanks for the over two and a half years. That's true. Chaos Warp can be a can be a Hail Mary play. Kia there be dragons. Well, Chaos Warp does shuffle. Come down here. Yeah, I had one in the fridge for when I got a migraine. Uh-oh, I drank her cold soda chat. It's been in there because I didn't have a migraine. Okay. I love you. I love you anyway. Put some ice in it. Snuffle up against Pegasi. Thanks for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. All right. So they're playing Just Kai Gear Hulk. Honestly, for sake of the world, and Chaos Warp are probably pretty good here. Part seems fine. Bone Crusher Giant seems whatever. Crux of Fate seems whatever. I guess Crux kills the Elemental and the This kills the Elemental and the and the the what's it called after they come into play? I don't know if that's good enough though. The Jeff is dead tomorrow, we know why you're not wrong. Maybe with Forsake and Chaos, I don't need all these rip aparts here. Maybe trim, uh, trim up Faithful Looting. I like trimming Looting post board a lot of the time because they'll have cards that inter interface with our graveyard, which makes this card have be a little bit less impactful. Honestly, going down to two of these could even be correct because it is card disadvantage if you're not getting graveyard value out of it. Why do husbands respond, I love you, when they do something? Mine does that too. It's a defense mechanism. So I miss Search for Azkanta with uh, Thoughtseize by waiting to play it on turn two here, but this lets me go tap land into Thoughtseize tap land, which I think is nice. It's, it's to remind you that we're dumb, but there's a reason why you put up with us being dumb. It's because we love we love our significant other. Uh, I think we're supposed to play around. Um, we're supposed to play around. Uh, counter unless we pay one here, Sensor. Huh? Is it Narset? I think it's Narset, huh? Why not both, chat? Why not both? Yeah, I, I had Murderous Rider to cover Tefri. 
Ooh, that's a rude one. Um... I guess I just don't have to use my graveyard. I'll take the tough raid. If we break on a fifth plan next turn, we're gonna discover him. So we can try and play these dragons on curve. Although if we draw like a rip apart, probably just cast that. All right, I think with the land drawn, we just chill on the discovery for now. We're not under any pressure, so we don't need to gain life. And there's value in like waiting until we know what we want to get rid of. Like we're not really looking for anything in particular right now. Like all of all of my cards are kind of okay. Read. Well, I right to play around it earlier. Are you thinking about drawing a card here? I assume they just want to draw two with this. Double tap. Well, that's terrifying. Hopefully, hopefully whatever they're keeping there, Murderous Rider gets to deal with. If they have a Gear Hulk here, we could be in a little bit of trouble because the Opus gets to kill Glorybringer. Yeah, Grixis. Grixis control is on my list of things to get to eventually, Delirious. I think I think four mana Nickel Bolas was low-key already one of the best things you could be doing in Grixis. And with the uh with the addition of Crux, that card gets even better. Untapped land. Untapped land. Untapped land. Rats, that's scary. Yeah, we were playing Mardu Tram. Night. They're gonna get to flip Azcanti here, so they're gonna get to just cast Opus soon. You thought Grixis is always a trap, it is. Yeah, there's definitely a time walk version of this deck. Um, I've seen people instead of playing, um, instead of playing the reanimate spell, they play, uh, what's it called? Instead of playing the reanimate spell, they play the, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the word. Instead of playing the reanimate spell, they play the uh, indomitable creativity and cheated into play. Yeah, the transmogrify. I think we're probably tempoed out of this game at this point. They have the Opus up here and they have Commit. Hey, 
just get to like opus opus and kill us here. So we're down to six. We don't so much damage to ourselves this game. Maybe I was supposed to use the. Maybe I sat on the thrilling discoveries too long that game. It's very possible. Like, not great, but like low range of keepable, I think. We have all of our colors of mana. We're probably gonna live long enough to cast these. Even if they have like a memory lapse here, like I've got plenty of lands. Double gear Hulk sensor. This might be a spell, we'll see. Man, that's good. Keep an open mind. Oh, yeah, I left it. I left it in the in the cupboard for you, Andy. This so normal blue white control has felt like a pretty good matchup for us. This feels pretty challenging. The fact that they're like they're like blue white control with like a way to actually kill us. Having having ways to end the game is busted shit. We need it. We needed them to break out a land for another turn or two here. So they get uh, they get to diddle my lore hold here. Oh, sure. I'm surprised they didn't just. I feel like they're supposed to like gear Hulk, Opus, tap it, and, like attack me for nine twice, but. Oh, they just want to be cute and do this? Sure. Can we draw lore hold and punish them for doing this? Rats. I, I feel like, I feel like we couldn't possibly win this game. And now, now I have a chance. Baba Booey. Yeah, my opponent like tunnel visioned on like making the cute play. Well, they'll add a temper on top of their deck. Keep up the pace. Lean Peen, thanks for the follow. So probably dead now because they drew Tefri, but I think their play was almost assuredly objectively wrong. They should have just killed us in two with the Gear Hulk. You 
You know what? I'm not. I'll take one more, one more draw to add a dragon here. I mean, I don't even know if it's really fair to call their deck a Gandalf deck. Like their deck's like got a got a pretty large tempo element to it with the with the gear hulks and stuff. Like when I think Gandalf, I think of these decks that just like have like Castle Arvin Vale as their win condition or like just Shark Typhoon. But their deck, their deck's like more comparable to like the Teamer Flesh deck than uh than something like Blue White, straight blue white control, I think, or Esper. Yeah, five five sixes and four fours close the game out very quickly. Oh, now I'm really glad we bought him the crux. Man, actually just endless control X. I need, to, I need to go back and like check the tape, but I feel like Hollow Fountain's been like 50 plus percent of our matches today. Miscast. Time to jam dragons, Chip. They, you know, miscast. I saw we were talking about versions of this deck that play that play the time walk with indomitable creativity. Yeah, this is the indomitable creativity build. That's what that's what they're doing. Discard do green XX blue weird Rex number instant sorcery in your graveyard, then you're trying to insert sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Weird. Weird jet. A strange card. They're playing it because it creates a token that they can indomitable creativity with. Is what is what they're doing. And then they're flipping Lorehold into play off of creativity. Which allows them to uh which allows them to take time walks. So Crux isn't great here. Chaos Warp seems fine. Soul Guide Lantern seems fine because they do stuff out of their bin. I guess being able to kill their dragon is pretty good. So Murder Shrider is probably okay. 
probably rather have Flame Scroll than Bone Crusher Giant. Although I guess I guess stomping I guess stomping the weird is okay because you can stomp it in response to. Would I rather have Flame Scroll or Bone Crusher Chat? What do we think? Stomping, stomping the tokens. They also they're also a deck that has treasure tokens though. They they creativity off of treasure tokens on occasion too. Maybe we play rip apart because of that. Let's let's play rip apart. It doesn't pressure, but it disrupts. Ben K, Famous, and Darwin, thanks for the follows. Gamebeard HS, welcome to Magic. All right, so I have to decide what axis we're attacking them on this game. It's probably on the axis of taking away their transmogrify effects, right? Hello, youngest son. What's up? Here, dig it fucking down. Oh. It opens this time, it opens. That's okay. Arkham MTG, thanks for the prime. You're losing. <laughs> I'm losing? Remember, I told you the life totals are not a scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> hey, be very careful walking back upstairs with this. Do not drop it on my carpet. And more specifically, your mother's carpet. You need cards. You need cards. I need cards? That's that's a very astute observation. Well, they have yet another transmogrify effect, but that's fine, right? Because I have I have the uh predition here. So can you like see their cards like on face? Yeah, this open? this card lets me look at all the cards they have in their hand and get rid of whichever one I want. Uh, the, the I did. Which I mean, get rid of. Whichever one I want. In this case, this one. It's pretty, it's pretty good. That's the OP card in that case. You think it's OP? Give the weak good card. Chat, chat. Declan thinks Thought Seize is OP. Do you, do you agree or disagree? <laughs> Cards. You can delete their cards, yep. Yeah, and, and you can delete OP cards if they have them. Chat, chat thinks you're right. Chat thinks that it's OP. Oh. So you have any guy who's OP. I don't, I don't have any, any, any creatures in play, you're right? Keep, keep taking damage to me, the guy. Okay, how many, how many mana do I need to play this guy? Uh, I don't know what... What's the, the numbers in the top? He takes five and then one and then one. So how much is that? And a, and a fire one and a planes one. Yep, that's exactly right. Fire one and planes. So, and a five mana. Wait, where's your mana? These are my lands. These are my mana. So you can play that one? Can I? How much does he cost? Five and you... Six. Well, he takes five plus one plus one. So, but you can play that because 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 you got both those. Ones. Oh, you have to. Each of these is one, so it's five, six. He takes seven. Five plus one plus one. We have to have a bunch of like wind ones and fire ones. Have you can play that one because fire, fire. I do have fire and the planes, but I need seven total. So we need one more, one more land card to jam jam the big daddy dragon. Oh, it has those five damage and five health. That's, a, that's, that's like the most damage. Because remember, chat, math is magic. You 
don't have any guys here. Neither do they have mage. What's that party thing? And the tank here about what they want to bin? If they find another creativity in a land, they could kill us this turn. Wait, if they get in our realm, they could kill us? Yeah, they're a combo deck. And they might they might put their combos together. We took we took all their we took three of their OP cards with our discard spells. But they might they might draw another OP card. Wait, why 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 can you use the the, the cards from, from 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 when you already used them? I can't. I was just showing you. These are the cards I've already played. Wait, so you already used all of your the weak cards? Yeah. Wow, they had the other creativity and they were just missing on They were just missing on on uh on the land, yikes. Uh is that land? Well yeah, Firkin, thanks for the follow. They binned an Aether Gust. That makes me think we're probably getting got this turn. All right, we really need an untapped land ship. Yeah, you. Oh no. No one. Temple, temple a tilt, chat. Temple a tilt. As is often the case, disrupting them endlessly, disrupting them endlessly is not a good solution. Get a ten ten. It's gonna kill us. Ten ten. Ten ten's really big. Almost, yep. Do the bound one shot because ten percent equals twenty. Do the one shot. Yeah, chaos chaos warp is good here. They don't have many permits. Oh. Is this the same person? Same person. I would love to do an updated Storm Heraldless Scholar. Yeah, remember we played three games. So I won the first game, they won that second game, and now we're playing game three. The whoever wins this wins the whole part. Wins the whole match, yep. This is the end of my Hmm? That's not the end of my stream. Daddy streams until at least 3 o'clock, sometimes 4 o'clock. Oh. For knowing thought sees is OP. Hey, someone just cheered a candy bar. You want a candy bar? I think we can make that happen later. <laughs> I was Naya Feather. Incredibly disappointing. <laughs> much to much to chance dismay, I'm confident that stone raining them with gas whip is wrong. Okay, so if they creativity this, I could chaos warp it in response. Get that kid a butterfinger. Thanks for the bits, Blur's Dave. And they can't miscast me, because if they miscast me with the treasure, then the treasure is no longer a target for creativity. Thank you for your generosity, Scholar. I'd love to get, love to get some, uh, 100 candy bars plus or minus inflation. Stormhound sounds like a great one to revisit. That's a deck that really benefits from looting. A moat and a balloon. A moat and a balloon. Inflation is a mode in balloons. Yeah, where you start with. Twenty thousand. Oh, do you? Yeah, that's my The twenty million, I think. It's a. It's a nah, it's a, it's a wash, Derek. All right. Well, we theoretically have. We theoretically have Dragon Mana next turn. Discard spells here here is a great pickup. Uh, uh, 
Thanks for the thanks for the ten months, genius. Welcome back. Now, miscast can counter the spells the dragon gets here, so. We're gonna get to attack with this next turn, but we won't be in the clear. Now the good news is our our Velocimus will be able to block their Velocimus. This is an under the table bribe to say Feather is great and buy its stuff. Also for Declan correctly identifying thought seizes OP. Chat's very proud of you. Your astute your astute card gaming observations. Thought sees is in fact OP. It's a close game, actually. It's a really close game. Nine is a kind of a big difference to 18. So we just keep going. 11 to 13 now. Yeah. And then. Alright, so there's their dragon. Oh, they, wait, what, what, will, will they one-shot your, get your guy, he one-shot your guy if their dragon hit? Yeah, they're gonna one-shot you if, if all their guys hit you. If, if dragon just one-shots you, hmm? dragon you. can sell you a trade if you hit your dragon. What, what happened to your dragon? They, they blew him onto the top of my deck. Just let them win. I don't know about that. I think we're I think we're dead though. So we have we have that here, but unfortunately we're just gonna die to uh die to the board here. Close close game. Alright, dude, you're crushing my leg. <laughs> Is this where you're going to rest, man? No, Daddy has two more hours of work, bud. Two more hours, so like, takes two hours for a man? Well, we play lots of matches. We're going to play another deck after this one. How are your classes today? Were you a good listener? Only had two. Is it Monday? Is today Monday? I think fishing time warp out of your deck seems more powerful. It's not Monday, but I need you to let me talk, okay? So fishing time warp out of your deck is more powerful than what our deck is doing, but their deck is a linear is a linear combo deck. And the point of our deck is to be an interactive control deck that has this dragon access that occasionally does quickly. So you're right if the only thing you're looking for is being as linear as possible and only stopping your opponent from interacting with you. The opponent's deck is great at doing that. But our deck is explicitly trying to play cards like Thoughtseize, like Bone Crusher Giant. We're a control deck that uses the dragon as a card advantage engine, not a combo piece. One of the things that's important to understand when you're playing non-rotating formats like this is the deep card pulls allow for lots of different play patterns to be competitive. And things, even if they involve similar cards, aren't just strictly better or strictly worse versions of each other. It's okay to be like, okay, these are both Philokimus decks, but they're different from each other. have been the right here so we could try and turn four dragon a card like gifts ungiven would be good and historic i don't know if that effect would really be playable if some gifts ungiven generally speaking is only playable in situations in modern where it's like a combo finisher the ladder has come down with the case of the gandalfs today you're not wrong
Someone asked about the kiddos. That's Declan. Declan's almost six. Jake just turned. Jake just turned seven. Well, Thing in the Ice is a card that we're guaranteed to get. There's a good chance we get Thing in the Ice over the summer, actually. Thing in Thing in the Ice is uh the Shadows of Shrug card. <laughs> ah. ah, blue white control. Couldn't have happened to a nicer, nicer Arctic chip. Listen, chat, I played against a lot of hollowed fountains today. They, they deserve every bit of flood they're currently experiencing. I, lo I long for the sweet release of Grow. They didn't want to flood, they'd have less fountains. Big, big mood. And Draco, thanks for the follow. Yeah, not foretelling was probably loose against my deck full of uh, full of threats. Maybe I'm supposed to thrilling discovery last turn so I can dig for a seventh land in case they sweep me. So crux of fates an easy out here. Bone crusher giants an easy out. With the addition of these to my sideboard, I have a few too many cards for this matchup now. Milk Doolian, thank you for the 24 months. Welcome back. How does Dragon see Bone Crusher as a spell? I thought it was a creature everywhere except the stack. I don't I don't know the magic rules reason why that works that way, but it does. So like Glorybringer, like look at my deck list. If I cut Glorybringer, I basically don't have um, enough threats to end the game, especially a trimming Bone Crusher Giant. Like we, we're the we're we're the beat down here. We need to kill the opponent. Yeah, the, the modal spells really make the dragon better in this deck, right? Like, not only the adventure cards that people are talking about are excellent here with our with our big dragon, but the, the spell lands are great too, right? Like, the, the maulings and the discard spell have both been stellar. Yeah, I, I agree, Vulgar. In fact, if you, if you look way back in my archive, there is a video of me being very disappointed at the announcement of Historic saying that it's it's worse than just getting pioneer and like they've they've thoroughly managed to exceed expectations and make this format better than what pioneer is what what historic stands to be able to be is honestly the best thing any non-rotating format in magic could be i think being the fact that they're going to go like pick and choose which cards from magic's history are here and which ones aren't is so phenomenal yeah i agree lacarp
This flame scroll celebrant is going the distance. It's going for speed. It's all alone. Do 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 do. Yeah, that's a great that's a great comparison, Moxine. Pioneer is going to be Arena's modern, and historic will be its legacy. Is exactly correct. Four, four flying hasters, I choose you. That's true. If you want to play some arena vintage, we're going to do that at some point too. So, I disagree with your, your assessment there completely, Vulgar. Magic, Magic's greatest strength as a card game is the fact that you can play Magic in lots of different game modes. And even, like, honestly, even right now, like, if Standard was in a state that was worth playing, I'd be playing some Standard even with Historic being good. But, like, you know... Standard Eldraine, eh. Um, like, variety is the spice of life, and having lots of unique formats that offer different play patterns is a great thing about magic. So, like, Historic can be great, and Pioneer and Standard can also be great, and it could just be sweet to bounce between them depending on what you're feeling like. Man, that's rude. Stop exiling my stuff! That's brutal. I'm known for my excellence. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent sure, Bob. Magic Magic is a game system and the formats are all like different games within it. Was that a good top deck? If so, why? Please explain. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so good. Why is it so good? I really should have seen that coming. Yeah, that's true too. Like what DMS said is jaded, but it's true. Magic formats ebb and flow, right? Like just because historic is great now doesn't mean it will always guarantee to be great. So having other formats that can be worth playing in the meantime is good. More stuff, good stuff. Fuck! Oh, chat! Oh, chat! If I was gonna try hard on the historic ladder, what deck would I pick? Crawl or rogues? Yeah, but like, if I duress, I still have cards in my hand, and I'd get to take this if it was a spell, because cycling draws them another card. So you're right, they'd have cycled in response to the duress, but it's it's like, my play was very wrong. Listen, opponent, I just time walked myself because of your Narset. If you could do me a solid and like, 
Like, just do nothing for the turn, that'd be great. Oh, shoot. Cage is gonna stop me from casting spells with this. Yeah, I definitely should have done that instead of the Tefri. They couldn't activate Narset. Revel in Silence says they can't. Man, chat, I can't believe I managed to throw this game away. I think this game's unlosable, if I play correctly. Like one of one of these, like that Graft Digger's Cage might have been the card they cycled into off of Shark Typhoon too, or this Narset. Like this Narset, that Tefri or that Graft Digger's Cage. The Tefri they got off of this, but like one of those, like yeah, that's a really really big mistake. They could have actually grat gusted this in response to its trigger and that I wouldn't be able to get it back next turn. Yeah, I mean I have I have cards to kill Cage here, chat, but like they have an active they have a planeswalker, they have an active Ascanta, so like we're solidly heading towards garbage time at this point. They have an Ascanta in play as well, so like you're right, we're technically not 0% chat, but we're like close enough to dead because of my mistakes oh, no, that like wow. we should probably top right. Like if this if this gets countered next turn, we'll be done. Being on the play isn't really a huge advantage in this matchup. Let's skip to the good. Neither neither of us are like rushing to do what we're doing. All right, so we need this to be a blank, and then we need them to like not find a memory lapse off of this, so we can kill this. And then even then, there's yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to the next one. Made like six, six different. Took like six different bad lines that game, including discarding two cards out of my hand when I didn't need to. Land, so Marcus in Dana D Danish, thanks for the follows. Right. The deck, the deck won this matchup 2 0. I'm gonna try and win in three. Shadow Basilisk. He opposed an additional more powerful format on Arena that had fetch lands. Um, I mean, separate for I would I would be opposed to fetch lands being added to historic. I would not be opposed to all of modern or all of legacy being programmed onto Arena. If they if they were gonna add one of those formats while simultaneously saying we're banning these cards in historic. I'd be okay with that, but no, I think I think Fetchlands would make Historic a markedly worse format. They would they would directly decrease my desire to play Historic. The addition of those cards. Even just Vista. Yeah, I think with the addition of Brainstorm, Vista's no longer a safe addition to this format. I think pre-Brainstorm Vista would have been fine.
Vistas of Fabled Passage that costs one and always comes into play on tap chat. I'm known for my Fetchlands are an incredible design mistake that we've always had to live with in other formats, and it's pleasant to not have to live with those design mistakes in Historic. Yes, path. That's why pathways are great, by the way. Pathways are basically fixed fetch lands. The original intention of fetch lands was you'd fetch one basic or the other with them. And that's that's how pathways work. Why are fetch lands bad wanting to show the reasoning? Well, in paper, they're tedious and they create lots of shuffling. In digital, they just provide too good of fixing. So basically think about it this way. A fetch land is always all five colors when you draw it because a fetch land fetches shock lands and a blue red fetch land can fetch steam vents, but it can also fetch watery grave and hollowed fountain and breeding pool and overgrown to, you know, like all of these different shocks. And again, one of the reasons why these higher powered cards that they've added to this format aren't super overbearing in these formats is in large part due to the fact that worse mana makes these powerful cards less good. Santa Poo, thanks for the prime support. And there's a lot of great people you can send that to every single month. Thanks for sending it this way this month. I think splashing a color is not something I want to do in that deck, Seth. I think Blink Moth Nexus is a card I'd like to try, but I really, I really want would prefer to have good consistent mana in that archetype. As opposed to splashing like that. Man, I don't really know if there was anything I could do different this game, but definitely feels like I definitely threw away the second game in the set. Honest, honestly, after playing this deck more, I feel like I have too many cards in my deck that let me put things into my graveyard. I feel like four four Faithless Looting and four copies of Thrilling Discovery feels like too much. Especially in these more fair matchups where we're like, we just want to like cast our spells honestly. I really don't think Chaos Warp's a very good main deck card. There really isn't Celiform. The best the best way is to wait till the decks are up on YouTube tonight and then like watch the wrap up segment at the end. Bro, pro tip, if you're on my YouTube channel and there's lots of different decks and you only have time to watch one and a bunch of them look sweet, take Take a second and go to like the last three minutes of each video. I do those concise wrap ups and listen to what past Jeff said about the wrap up of that deck. Because I'll, I don't sugarcoat it. If I thought a deck wasn't worth thinking about, I'll tell you. Huh.
Watching watching the longest videos is usually a good plan too. The longer the longer decks, the decks that are better get more time. I assume this is a counter spell. Just gonna watch it. You're you are definitely welcome to watch all of them. I won't I won't tell you not to watch all of them. I just also understand being a parent with limited time for content. Ooh, something like Seasoned Hollow Blade actually sounds really sweet. Because, like, we have, like, this Bone Crusher giant plan. So, like, having that as a discard outlet sounds kind of neat. And something, like, proactive we can play out. It's decent in the control matchups. We can beat down with it. How do I do my YouTube thumbnails? Yeah, I use uh, I use a Python library called Pillow to generate my thumbnails on YouTube. I download I download card images and I crop them to a two by one aspect ratio, and then my my Pillow script spits out the images based on the title. I've showed it I've showed it on screen before. So like. For Twitch chat, that might be a little bit long. Abruptica and uh, Aetherflux Reservoir. And we'll pick the arena logo and we'll pick some colors. We'll hit generate. All right. Spits, spits it out for me. They're not, they're not as pretty looking as like, people's images that do them by hand, but like it's much like doing, doing like four or five of those per day, like professionally looking, looking ones is just a lot of work. So they look, they look procedurally generated because they are. <laughs> yeah, for, for a long time, I didn't do thumbnails at all. Yeah, I love I love Python. Where do I fetch the images? Google. One of the one of the things that I desperately miss from working with Riot is Riot has just like a central library where you can grab all of their card images from in one nice little download. Whereas like for Magic, I have to do random Google searches, and the quality is pretty pretty varying on those. All right, is this a counter spell? Cast out. Is it Nathan Gust? That's rough beats. I was doing good with Rune Terran, right? I mean, yeah, I'm on good terms with them. Their game, their game is, uh, I just don't really care for the. I don't really care for their current gameplay. Their their game, their card design pushed in a direction that I wasn't a fan of. This is the TLDR. I'll probably revisit it at some point, but I really don't like their current their current constructed format. When your dragon births more dragons, and it and it buys a revive for itself, which is sweet. Brick, brick, brick. We're dead. We're dead to any piece of spot removal here. If they play, if they flash this in, so they got to decide: do they want to flash this in or do they want to wrath the god next? I think they're supposed to flash this in and have us dead to Tefri. Yeah, Wrath, Wrath is not very good here. Was that with Shurima or before that? No, it was with Shurima. In fact, the, the Shurima expansion made their issues that I have with their, their constructed format more prevalent. 
Basically, to get, for people that haven't played Runeterra, Runeterra's constructed format actually feels very similar to Historic in that there's a lot of combo and aggro decks, but their format is only best of one. So it's like, it feels like playing best of one Historic, which I personally don't find enjoyable. I'll do it again, I swear. Very quiet, chat. I'm gonna force them to block with the Brazen Borrower here. And I'm pretty sure we just gained two with this. I want to keep my extra dragon in my hand. Yeah, cast, cast terrible healing self is exactly right. Hey, well, looks like we're gonna manage to win this matchup 3-0. I would have won the second game if I wouldn't have like thrown it, spiked it into the garbage can. Yeah, I think this I think this deck's got a pretty good Gandalf matchup. Right, we need to restart the client here after we do our wrap up. We got, we got another deck coming up. We're going to wrap up on this one. I'm going to restart the client. We're going to play at least one more. I really like this one, though. I'm glad I'm glad that this deck wasn't a one-hit wonder. I feel like my wrap up on here is I feel like I don't quite have enough payoffs to get into the bin to make eight of this effector we discard and draw feel worthwhile. So I think, I actually, Twitch chat had a good, a good suggestion. I really like the suggestion of Seasoned Hollow Blade. This is, this is a card that like gives us a way to get things into the bin when that's good. And like, honestly, this can be really sneaky too. Cause like you could activate this twice like, you know, you go to your fourth turn and then like, okay, activate, activate, bin rights, bin the dragon, rights and attack is really sweet. You can protect this from your crux of fate. So I could, I think I want to do like split these two and two. I don't know that I want to play the full four of these, but two and two seems good. This is another, another sweet card that allows us to apply pressure against combo and control decks, which is nice. Like, I'm happy with where the sideboard ended up at. The big change we made in the sideboard today was we added Forsake and uh, Chaos Warp to it to have ways to interact with Clothis since we care about um, that not only interact with our graveyard but also racing us. Um, I was very, very happy with both uh, Predation and Mauling. Um, honestly, maybe that's not true. I was really happy with Predation. I'm actually not certain... I'm not certain that mauling is actually better. So we added the adventure cards in Murderous Rider and Bone Crusher Giant, and these both felt good today. And it could be that with these being additional pieces of removal to hit with this game one, maybe I want all of these to be the discard spells. Yeah, yeah, that's also, there's definitely some bias there in the matchups that we played. Like, if you told me that we were going to play the matchups that I played today, I would play four of these in a heartbeat. So you can kind of, like, tailor this slot to depend on what you what you care about beating, which is nice. Luna, Luna Light Life, thank you for the 19 months. Welcome back. It's possible we need to search more playable Eldrade cards. Does always seem like upgrades? Yeah, maybe. All right, sweet. All right, let's uh, let's get this client restart.